Joe Biden, president of the United States and man who signs every text message like it's an email, arrived in Europe yesterday for his first foreign trip as president and his first trip to England since the ribbon cutting ceremony at Stonehenge. And it looks like he's already making headlines. This morning, President Biden is in England, where he's set to meet with Prime Minister Boris Johnson before the start of the G7 summit. Mr. Biden is also expected to announce a historic COVID vaccine donation to low-income nations. 200 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine this year, 300 million by the first half of next year, all going to 92 countries who need it the most. One of the key sort of highlights of their visit together will be this re-signing, this reaffirmation, as it were, of the Atlantic Charter a new Atlantic Charter modeled after that post-war declaration from 1941 between FDR and Winston Churchill, uh, focusing on the cooperation between the two nations. It'll highlight things like defense and trade, climate change, and a shared effort to combat cyber threats as well. That's right, people. Joe Biden and Boris Johnson are updating the Atlantic Charter that was first signed back in 1941. And both sides got some concessions, right? The UK agreed to limit the number of royal refugees that they'll send to the US. And in exchange, the US agreed to start putting the letter U back into words again. Plus, the UK will produce more Harry Styleses and the US will start calling soccer football and football brain ouchie time. Everybody wins. But that is also a huge announcement that Biden made over there. The United States is donating 500 million vaccines to the rest of the world, which seems generous until you remember that Biden can't get anyone else in America to take them, right? So it's kind of like giving your friend that old exercise bike that you've just been hanging your clothes on. And let me be the first to say, on behalf of the international community, thank you to all the anti-vaxxers in America. The people of the world would not have these vaccines if it wasn't for your commitment to believing whatever the dumbest guy from your middle school posted on Facebook. You guys are the real heroes. Moving on now to some breaking science news. We're all familiar with the oceans of the world, right? Atlantic, Pacific, uh, posh and sporty. Well, as of today, there's a new ocean in town. It may well be time to toss out all of your old world maps because There's a big change to tell you about. National Geographic announced this week it would now officially recognize a fifth ocean called the Southern Ocean. Geographers say the swift current circling Antarctica keeps the waters distinct and worthy of their own name. National Geographic says its map policy committee has actually been considering this change for several years. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You guys just found a new ocean on a planet that's been around for, I don't know, like 800 years? Was it hiding behind an iceberg or something? I just like, I don't get how we didn't realize this sooner. It's like, it's like discovering that your apartment has a second kitchen under the sofa. Huh, well, I guess I just never looked under here before. And by the way, I love how this whole thing is just a statement by National Geographic. Because you realize they're not part of the UN or anything, right? They're just a magazine but they're the magazine about nature, so we all go with it. Oh, National Geographic says it, yes, yes. It's almost like if Playboy announced that there's a third boob, we'll all be like, well, I haven't seen it, but if Playboy says it, it's gonna be true. But I have to ask, have humans learned nothing from colonization? We shouldn't go around drawing borders around the places we don't live, right? That should be up to the fishes who live there. And that's why I went under the sea to ask them about it in person. Hello, my fish friends. Where would you like us to draw your borders? What? No, why don't you go back to where you came from? You racist ass fish. I'm gonna say that to me, I'm trying to be your friend. I'll see you at sushi. I don't even know where fish learned the N word. In other science news, let's talk about death. It's when you get canceled by nature. But if you've been looking for a loophole, a new discovery might just give you some hope. Well, listen to this story. Scientists say a tiny worm has come back to life after being frozen underground for 24,000 years. 
I'm not sure how they know that, but they say the microscopic organism you see here, even though it's not thrilling, well, Russian scientists say they found it in the permafrost lands of northeastern Siberia and transported it to a Russian lab to examine its biology and history. Scientists say the worm has by far the longest recorded survival period in a frozen state. Wow. A worm coming back to life after 24,000 years. What a miracle of science and nature and life. I'll give you five bucks if you eat that thing. And you know, we always think about things from our perspective as humans, but can you imagine what it was like for that worm? I mean, that worm was probably surprised to see human scientists around him because 24,000 years ago, we were all just cavemen. That's how much things can change in 24,000 years. In fact, all those people who go into cryogenic storage now, they might wake up in 24,000 years and find out that the worms are now in charge. Well, well, well. If it isn't the guy who dissected my ancestor in seventh grade biology, how the tables have turned. Also, uh, no disrespect to worms, but it's probably easier to survive getting frozen when you're a worm. I mean, worms don't have a whole lot going on. You know, they're pretty much just a mouth and a butt. That's it. Pretty sure God was running out of ideas for animals. And then he saw that cardboard thing in the middle of a paper towel roll and he was like, okay, that's a living thing now. And finally, some big media news today. CNN analyst Jeffrey Tubin returned to the air for the first time in eight months and had to have a pretty painful conversation about why he hasn't been on TV. I feel like we should address um, what's happened in the months since we've seen you. So uh, I guess I'll recap. I'll do the honors. <laughs> Help yourself. Okay. <laughs> um, in October, you were on a Zoom call with your colleagues from the New Yorker magazine. Everyone took a break for several minutes, during which time you were caught masturbating on camera. Uh, you were subsequently fired from that job after 27 years of working there. Do I have all that right? Um, you got it all right, sad to say. I think one point, I, I wouldn't exactly say in my defense because nothing is really in my defense. I didn't think I was on the call. I didn't think other people could see me. Now, that's not a defense. This was deeply moronic and indefensible, but I mean, that, that, is, part of, that, that is part of the story. Um, and, you know, I have spent the seven subsequent months, miserable months in my life, I can certainly confess, um, trying to be a better person. I mean, in therapy, trying to do some public service, um, working in a food bank, which I certainly am going to continue to do. But I am trying to become the kind of person that people can trust again. Uh, you, I can't watch. Oh man, I cannot think of anything more awkward to watch than that interview. Okay, maybe one other thing. And you know, I bet the awkwardness lasted after that interview too, because you know that Jeffrey Tubin doesn't trust cameras anymore, right? And cut. All right, Jeffrey, we're clear. So the camera is off. Yep. I'm just gonna smash that camera with a hammer if you don't mind. You know, I don't know if you picked this up, but one thing I don't get is when he says he's been working in a food kitchen. Like, I mean, that's great, don't get me wrong, but I don't really see the connection with what he did. You know, if anything, that's just unfair to the people at the food kitchen. Hello, would you like a piece of fruit? Uh, no, thank you. I think I'll go a couple more days without eating. <laughs> 